Good morning, everyone. Welcome to our 2019 France Women's World Cup preview. Today, we'll be talking about the favorites in this tournament, and the potential best players and coaches are well let you know who are the missing and who could shock this summer. We also invited our kindly reporters Paula Sanchez and Brandon Prager to be here with us. In the last two World Cups, USA and Japan have dominated the final. Each of them had got one trophy, but now Japan is world number eight, which means they have seven places behind the USA. Maybe this summer's final could have some different participants. At the USA still on the world top ranking with massive competitiveness. Paula, you've been looking at the USA. What have you found? Yeah, USA definitely is one of the best teams right now on the ranking. Um, previously, they've been in four finals, won three of them. Um, they have, um, they love to score. In the last games, in the group games, they scored 26 goals, letting none in. Alex Morgan scored seven of that goals. Um, between Carly Yord, for example, has scored 105 goals. She's in the five top scorer of her national team. And obviously, we're going to see a lot of goals because in the Shiba Lifts Cup that just recent, recently we just saw, um, she well they scored five goals, they drew two games, they won one. We will see definitely a lot of goals in the USA. Okay, thank you, Paula Brandon. As you have looking at the host France, yep. what did you find? Um, well, in terms of France, historically they've not been brilliant in the tournament, but they're looking to use the advantage like the men's team did in the World Cup that just gone in that tournament. They're hoping that an extra amount of fans there should be enough to push them over the edge. They've only ever reached the semi-finals, and last time out in Canada, they only got to the quarterfinals, losing to Germany. So it's whether that pressure is going to be too much for them, which I don't think it will. I think they're going to go pretty far in this tournament. Okay, so what about Germany, the other world second now? Well, so Germany right now is second in the FIFA World Cup. Mm -hmm. um, it's one of the FIFA most successful teams. Um, they've already won one World, well, two World Cups. And definitely we'll see a lot of commitment for the team. We will see a good Germany, strong Germany, because they know what to do, they know what they play, and we will see a good team. Cool. As I know, England's manager Phil Neville is the only male among the top four sides. So, Brandon, as an English man, what did you find their chances are? Uh, well, to be honest, I've been absolutely surprised by Phil Neville. I mean, coming into the England setup, they were doing brilliantly, and the fact is, they've improved. I, I don't know how it's possible. He's won eight out of 13 matches and he's what he's done quite successfully is he's linked a blend of youth players and senior players and it seems to get the mix really well and they've just bonded. And obviously what makes it even better is the She Believes Cup has just finished and England have actually won it to, well, maybe not to the surprise of everyone, but they've beaten Brazil they beat Japan and drew with America, so I'll take that as a win if anyone else will. Thank you, Brandon. For his girl, Jill Ellis led the USA to bring the trophy back. How do you see her doing this time? Definitely, in the last World Cup, she did great. She just joined the team in 2015, she won the World Cup, then she was even honoured with the FIFA Coach of the Year for Women's Football. And she definitely has a good team this year. I feel like uh, they're going to fight they are, for, they are fierce, they won it. And in the last, um, since 2018, they've won like um, 19 games. They've only drawn five. They've scored 69 goals in more or less one year. They've only let in 20. They definitely have a very good team. Thank you, Paula. Well, there's something controversial happened on some teams. As I know, that Cameron and Australia have CK their manager and got new ones in. What's your guys about their opinions? Well, personally, I don't like the idea. I think that sacking your manager so close to a tournament is really damaging for the squad because they don't have time to implement the tactics, even get to know the players. So I personally think that the only way that a side can be successful at the World Cup is by actually giving them enough time. For example, Phil Neville is the perfect example. England got him in and he's been in over a year now and even now he still doesn't know his best team. So what chance does a manager stand if they're in for only a couple of months? They may not even know who the best is at taking penalties. We could recent, like we recently happened in the last World Cup, men's World Cup, 
like Spain lost their uh, coach a few days after, before Julian Lopetegui um, didn't coach them and they had a new coach for the last three days and it didn't work out because the coach needs to know their players, the players need to know the coach and it's like Brandon was saying, bond each other, know each other, who's better in this position, who's better in that and this will not happen if they sack new, the coach for like three, four months. Thank you. We're going to see some Thailand players and some of them are not in the top teams like the Norwegian Ada and the Australian Sam Kerr. Could you please tell us some information about them? Yeah, uh, well, starting with Sam Kerr, she's been brilliant. I mean, this last year for her has been outstanding. She's been named the captain under the new manager, which just shows how important she's been. She's also become the top goal scorer in her league and has become the fifth top goal scorer for a national side. So she, this year, has just proved how much of an important player she is. And she's getting recognised on a world stage now. So I think that if she's on fire, Australia could do pretty well in this tournament. Yeah, and just talking about Ada Hegerberg, um, she de unfortunately, she will not be in the World Cup. Um, she just recently won the first ever Ballon d'Or, so that was a very important thing and everyone was hoping that we could see her skills on the World Cup. But since uh, last uh, Euro Cup, she definitely said she was not going to play with her national team Norway because she thinks women and men are not treated in the same way. And she said that whenever this hap it changes, then she will play again. We Everyone thought that she was going to come back, but it didn't. But Norway has still a few players like... Um, Myron Naftal, Chelsea captain, and her teammate uh, Maria Thorisotitur. It will definitely, Norway has few to help her them. Okay, apart from them, let's talk about those top players in those top teams. For example, like Franca B. Franca B. Uh, she had had a great season last year. So, Brandon, what makes her so important for England? Well, she, as you said, had a great year and I think that she wasn't as important for England as she's proven under Phil Neville because what not only is she using her mind and she's getting about a lot, she's providing important goals and it's not just a goal in a game that doesn't matter, she's scoring in some pretty important games for both club and country and as you said, she's done really well for a club. She actually got the player of the year in the league, which has just again showed how outstanding she's been in the middle of the park. And she's kind of created herself as one of the key leaders in the team, even though she's not the captain. Yeah, and talking about attackers, we, could def we have the best example, Alex Morgan, the USA player. She's been outstanding these last games. Um, she likes to score. She scored a lot of mm, mm, goals this season. And with the national team, she scored, even in this um, group game, seven goals. It was a big number. And joining Carly Lloyd and Megan Rapinoe, they scored 280, uh, sorry, 38 goals between the three of them in the national team. That's a lot of goals. And Alex Morgan, she's a young, creative player. We will see her creating showing young kids, young women, young girls that want to play. I will definitely see good Alex Morgan. Thank you, Paula. There are some a number of top, play, top teams they are missing from this World Cup this summer, such as Denmark, Switzerland and North Korea. Brandon, could you tell us about what happened to them? Yeah, so two of the sides, the two European sides, actually got to the playoffs and both of them got knocked out by the Netherlands, who are pretty decent side but the, the one side that kind of confuses me the most is North Korea. They're a side that got banned from the last World Cup but they didn't even make the qualification stages of this World Cup because they play in a Asian tournament to see who can go further and they didn't do really well in that so they're going to be quite missed in this tournament. Okay, thank you, Brandon. There are some teams they probably will shock us or surprise us this summer, like all Holland, Nigeria, and Brazil are the three who are well reckoned could surprise us. Could be the dark horses. So, Paula, how do you think that Brazil could surprise us? Yeah, definitely Brazil could surprise us. They've been only once in the final. They've never won a World Cup, and they've always fought it for it. 
Marta's team is a strong team. But I think, however, uh, Japan is more of a surprise for us. We didn't mention it, but Japan won in the 2011 World Cup. They were the first Asian team to win the World Cup, the fourth in the world. And they definitely are one of the best teams right now, so I feel like they could surprise us. So what about Holland? Yeah, I mean, Holland, as I said, they won through the playoffs, so they, they actually did really good. Now, the story of Holland's qualification is actually more of a frustrating one than a good one because they almost went through the group as winners. They actually had to go into the final game and beat Norway, and they lost that game. And that really was the only stumbling block. Other than that, the only other game that they dropped points was when they drew 0-0 against the Republic of Ireland. So they had an outstanding qualification stage and coupling with the fact that they're actually the European champions at the moment, I think they're going to be a very strong side. And the fact that Vivian Mamenda was the second top goal scorer, joint with about four players, it says that there's a lot of talent in that squad. And I think they definitely stand a chance of getting to the semi-finals and causing a right good battle, at least in one game. Thank you, Brandon. But I guess Nigeria shouldn't be ignored by the other sides as well. Uh, they already incredibly won 11 African Women's Championships and they've taken part in the all past seven World Cups. In the end, there are some extra information about the date and places of games. The first match of this year's World Cup will be played at the Parc des Princes and will be on Friday 7th of June. France will play against South Korea in that match. Yeah, while well, the final will be in the state of Lyon the 7th of July, a month after, we'll have to see who will make that match. Thank you. Thanks for Paula and Brandon coming on today. This has been our 2019 France Women's World Cup preview. We hope you have enjoyed it. See you next time.